Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Chicago, Illinois, in front of the Cloud Gate, known, probably better known as the Bean. The Bean is as commonly known by tourists and travelers. And we're just a few blocks away from the precipice of Route 66, the beginning of Route 66. Now my plan here, we're gonna hop on Route 66 and we're going to St. Louis. We're going to St. Louis because they're having Trans World, the haunted house convention that they have yearly in St. Louis. One of my favorite events, and from what I can see, it's one of you guys' favorite events as well. We're gonna see the new technology in haunted houses and scaring people. Always a good time to be had at Transworld. But I figured, I was staying at my mom's outside of Chicago. I figured from Chicago to St. Louis, it's connected by Route 66, so I could just take Route 66 to St. Louis. But I found no good reason to stop after Transworld, so we're gonna be going to St. Louis. We're gonna be taking a few days at, uh, at Transworld to enjoy the Transworld festivities. And then, why not? We're gonna keep on going Route 66, and hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, we will end up in Santa Monica, California at the end of Route 66. But before we get started on Route 66, let's take a moment to enjoy the bean. Or the cloud gate, depending on what you prefer to call it. Let's see, got quite a few people here enjoying the bean, enjoying the cloud gate. You can see, hello, I'm in a bean. You can see it is revered as a great spot for selfies, people taking all sorts of creative pictures in the bean. And let's, I, you know, I've never actually been to the bean. It's kind of crazy. I grew up outside of Chicago. This is my first experience with the bean. Let's see, I think you can walk underneath the bean here. Oh, weird. It's got kind of a weird mirror up on top. I don't know if you can see that. See people walk under the bean there. And you can look up and there's like a mirror right in the middle. I think that's me right there. So all sorts of opportunities. Oh, look how many people touched the bean. Look at all the fingerprints and lip prints that appear in the bean. <laughs> yes, this ain't no baked bean that we have here. Uh, let's wander towards it and get a good reflective shot. Oh, we can see me marching up there. Let's see if we can get close. Oh, close to the bean. Hello, everybody. Oh, you can see different people there. You can see the whole crowd of people in the reflection of said bean. You can see the Chicago skyline from here in the park with that background of constant ambulances and police sirens. Now these are interesting. You have these towers here that have faces on them. And these are like projections or something that actually move ever so slightly. I think it just blinked. It just blinked. There's another one right here with this man's face. You can see the face there. And apparently, just blinked again. Apparently this, this feature is turned off right now, but during the summer months, they will actually spit water at you. You can see right there in their mouth, they will uh, pucker their lips and spit a stream of water directly at you. So I may have to come back in the summer and uh, see what it's like to have a giant creepy face spit on me. 
I just noticed that one right there went dark. Where'd the where'd the face go? Oh, that one went dark too. Where'd the faces go? Oh, okay, they're back. They're back. You can see the faces have changed to different faces with the slight face movements, which are slightly, <laughs> slightly creepy. Over here, you can see the mouth moving on that character. Very interesting uh, public uh, display here. Here we have the famous lions out in front of the Art Institute of Chicago. And it begins. We're here at the beginning of Route 66. It is 2,448 miles in that direction to Santa Monica, California. Let's get going. Feet don't fail me now. And right at the beginning of Route 66, we have this Walgreens. I guess I'm gonna run here and get something to drink. Here's something I saw people actually complaining about. This is the uh, new drink refrigerator here at Walgreens. They have a virtual screen for some reason. You think it'd be easier to just leave it open and being a piece of glass, but you know, they have complicated things and made it a, a virtual display. You can see it opened right there. So here's the soda section. They have Sunkist, but no diet Sunkist. Let's see if this, this actually matches up to reality. So yeah, it does, but like, why not just let us see reality? Why do you have to hide reality behind a fake screen? Don't we stare at screens enough these days? Or maybe not. Maybe this is just super cool and futuristic. <laughs> it's also weird how everything moves. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this, this veal coconut water is doing a little dance for some reason. Oh, there, that, that, that Gatorade Zero is doing a little jig too. All right, so let's get us some, just a nice old fashioned water. Oh, so now I open the water, which it looks like there's a ton of out here, but when you open it, there's, there's no water. So, fail, I guess. All right, I guess I'll have to look in the uh, fancy water section to try to get us a water. Let's see. Let's take the non-fancy water out of the fancy water section. We'll drink that. What a, what, a, what a time to be alive. Ooh, they have some cool Chicago souvenirs here in, uh, in, the, in the Walgreens. Is this building, is that the, I think that's the Sears Tower slash Willis Tower. And then you have some bean banks, some bean banks where you can keep your change. See the Chicago city flag there commonly seen on CM Punk's wrestling trunks. Oh, and you have these monkeys here. They love Chicago. This blue monkey loves Chicago a whole bunch. The Windy City. <laughs> All right, just strolling down Route 66 here. <sighs> See these dangly ropes right here? It's actually some window washers up there clean the windows of the side of that building. That's a job I would never want to do. Oh, the beautiful noises of the city. Jackhammers, squealing tires. Taking Route 66 underneath the L train, the elevated train here. We cross the street in a moment. <laughs> and look at this tall drink of water. Right here we have what some people call the Willis Tower. I, uh, I still call it the Sears Tower because that's what I grew up calling it. Arguably the tallest building in the United States. On a bridge here over top the Chicago River. If you take a look, it is very green. But uh, that's actually a seasonal thing. They actually paint the river green in anticipation of St. Patrick's Day. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to enjoy the St. Patrick's Day 
festivities here in Chicago. I'm gonna actually be at Trans World on uh, St. Patrick's Day, so that should be fun too. All right, I've decided that uh, walking all the way to Santa Monica is uh, a little much, so I'm actually gonna head back here and get my car. I figured I could probably make it walking to Santa Monica, but uh, once I get there, my car will be all the way back in Chicago. I don't wanna have to walk Route 66 twice in a row. Yeah, that's much better. Henry's Drive-In, see the giant hot dog up there. If you notice, the giant hot dog actually has french fries inside of it, and that's uh, part of, their, part of their, their thing, is to actually put the french fries on the hot dog and make it a meal in itself, as the sign says. Now I ate here last time I did Route 66, but I thought maybe we'd try something uh, we hadn't tried before for lunch. And I figured we'd get some lunch here at Del Rio Chicken Basket and Cocktail Lounge. Said that this started out as a gas station in uh, the 1940s, and the chicken at the gas station was really popular. As you know, gas station chicken now, not, not as good as it used to be, possibly, but uh, in the 1940s, they had some good gas station chicken, and let's uh, check out Del Rio Chicken Basket. Let's see the little rooster there on the door. Great dapper rooster. And here we are inside the Del Rio chicken basket. So there's little chickens dotting that top shelf right there. They actually make their own soda here. So I got some Del Rio's chicken basket and cocktail lounge black cherry soda in a bottle here. So we'll add it to the glass of ice. Mm. Oh, that soda is so good. I love this. Maybe, maybe I need to get some of this for the road. Mmm, that's so tasty. Put a little honey on this biscuit here. Mm. so tasty. And there we have it. The fried chicken basket there. Looks like we got one of each chicken piece. Got a leg, wing, thigh, my favorite piece of the thigh, and a breast. Alright, so try the little leg here. Ooh, very hot. Right out of the fryer. Mm. There's some amazing, amazing fried chicken there. I like the soda so much, I wanted to see what their orange is like, so, so we can get some of this orange in the ice cup. The orange soda. Mm. Yeah, definitely recommend getting their uh, their housemate soda. It's very, very good. Now the chicken was so filling, I didn't have enough room left for all these fries. So, still very good, but clean plate club denied. See all the different chicken trinkets on the wall. There's the chef that cooks the chickens, but uh, looks like he's gonna celebrate St. Patrick's Day first. Stopped here at the Launching Pad restaurant. That wonderful giant hot dog there. Now, unfortunately, they have not yet opened for the season. It says they're opening in March, so, so it should be uh, fairly soon. Do you like this uh, little rocket ride they got here. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. I was just peeking in the window here and I uh, a little startled when I saw someone staring back at me. And you can see that on every table they actually have a map of the entire Route 66. But what the launching pad is probably best known for is this, the Gemini Giant. One of the more unique muffler men that dot this country. See his giant feet there. He's named the Gemini Giant because of his space helmet and rocket that he carried. And I know last time I was here, the owners of the launching pad were saying that they were having, they had just bought the place and they were having the Gemini Giant clean. And he looks, he looks very nice. He looks very clean and sparkly. They do have some great merch here. Last time I was here, I bought one of these cool little bobblehead Gemini Giants. On top of this tire and alignment shop, got a classic Sinclair dinosaur. Here's the polka dot drive-in. Now, unfortunately, I can't just stop and eat at every drive-in along Route 66, or, or I'd, I'd die. But here at the polka dot, they do have a collection of nostalgic 50s figures here. Mr. Elvis Presley, got Marilyn Monroe. Unfortunately, her dress has, has been blowing up. Quite embarrassing for her. And uh, Mr. James Dean, who by all accounts was a very cool man. And uh, Miss Betty Boop over here. And over here on the other side of the parking lot, we have another larger Elvis Presley. If we look closely here, we can see not only does he have peacocks emblazoned on his jumpsuit, but he has a ring that says TCB. Of course, that stands for The Carpet Bagger. Fortunately, it looks like someone has stole the jewel out of his ring. Another photo op here, we have Mr. Superman next to the phone booth here. Okay, there's no, no signal on that one. Got the phone booth here. Oh, you can dial though, that's kind of cool. But it looks like Superman has already used the phone booth, which he rips off his nerd gear and becomes Superman. They, wa they wanted to talk to you. That yeah, sounds important. No? Okay. Superman can't, uh, can't, can't talk right now. Very busy, very busy. And just across the street from the Polka Dot Diner, we have another interesting attraction this is the Braidwood Zoo. It's a collection of folk art animals made by folk artist Jack Barker. When apparently when he died, uh, all of his art was auctioned off from his property and the town of Braidwood bought some of the pieces and have them on display here. You can see Braidwood Cruisin 2013, Route 66. You can see this big lumpy giraffe. I'm not sure what these are made out of. It's an interesting material. We can see the big giraffe right there. I think some other things. We have a, a steer. He looks to be made from metal pieces. And I think that might be a sloth. Yeah, if I had to guess, I'd say that was some sort of sloth. Looks like he's made out of Spanish moss. Then looking through the zoo bars here, we have a very angry cow. Look at those angry red cow eyes and yes I know it's a cow because you can see the udders dangling back there and in the back here we've got a big old pink elephant the universal symbol for drunkenness
see that VW bus poking out there over top that restaurant. It's called Everybody's. And then next door we have Big Fellas. Here in Gardner, Illinois, they have the historic 1906 two cell jail. We'll peek in here. Let's see, yeah, there are the two cells in here. They leave it open for people to uh, visit. See the cot there. Oh, and they have the toilet, you see. So you'd poop down that hole and you'd sleep here. Not a very awesome life. And here I guess the sheriff could sit there in this chair and taunt you while you're trying to sleep. My only crime was caring too much. As we step outside of the jail, it says press button for a, mes a message, a message? I'm afraid. Welcome to Gardner, Illinois. We're happy that you've taken the time to visit and explore these unique and one-of-a-kind pieces of Route 66 folklore. It was used mainly to control hobos and vagrants, especially during the 1930s. Okay, era. so this was a, a jail for hobos and vagrants. Trains ...and wander around town seeking out food more. This was acceptable in those days. Folks wanted them safely locked up at night. Be sure to stroll over to Wait a minute. Our other fascinating they just said that structure. they would lock hobos and vagrants in here at night and let them out during the day because people didn't like hobos wandering around during the day. That's kind of awful. Here's the Riviera restaurant, or rather a monument to the Riviera restaurant. You see Betty Boop hitchhiking there on Route 66. Apparently the original Riviera burnt down but this is actually a streetcar converted to a diner that is uh, put up in remembrance. So we can peek in the window here. Oh yeah, you can see the cook there making some breakfast, scrambling up some breakfast for the uh, travelers. And there's a Schlitz beer sign. driving up here on Holiday Road as we head into Wally's Great American Road Trip. You can see Wally's here has quite a few gas pumps like another uh, famed American gas station. And the gas here is under $4 a gallon which is a pretty big accomplishment these days. So a gas station named Wally's and they have this station wagon out front. I'm definitely getting a strong vibe. All right, so let's head in to Wally's Great American Road Trip and see what they have to offer. Ah, oh, welcome to Wally's. You can see they have these friendly animals. It's a bear. A couple of squirrels, a raccoon, a fox, chaos reigns. Some barbecue here in the middle. Almost has a Bucky's like vibe, don't you think? Quite a selection of fountain drinks over there. And then the restrooms are themed like the Grand Canyon. Who wants some sloosh? They have a full sized Winnebago in here. What are they selling out of the side of the Winnebago? Got some, looks like camping equipment, some fuzzy blankets. And on this side of the Winnebago, they sell coyotes. Oh, there's another one right there. Okay, I think I do love this place. Look at this. These are the cartoon characters that we saw coming in. There's the bear in the hat. There is the raccoon playing the guitar in front of the fire. 
Oh, see, they're all friends. There's the fox with the cool sunglasses. And the chipmunk there. Or is that, that's a squirrel. That's a squirrel. This one here, he's the chipmunk eating his acorns there. Just, oh my gosh. Yeah, the fox is drinking a beer. The bear's drinking a Diet Pepsi. This is, this is awesome. Here we have some Wally's merch. I guess this is the seal of Wally's. Gas, food, and driving. We have a tennis visor that says Wallaluya. It says home of the Great American Road Trip. And this one says official road trip third wheel. That's not very nice. We've got some drink coasters here. With these uh, cute little animal characters on them. Got hats. These like seat cushions here for your butt. And some uh, air fresheners. Got a Wally Bear air freshener there. More visors. Some interesting t shirts here for Wally's. The I Survived Wally's Alligator Farm World's Smallest. I don't know. Did I miss the alligator farm? I guess it was maybe too small to see. <laughs> Get your slooch on. Let's check out this moose head. There's a moose head inside of Wally's. Alright, let's try a slush. Oh, that it just changed colors, I think. Did, did you anyone else see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. That, that slush changes colors. Well, let's try a slush here. They have Coke, Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, Cotton Candy. But over here, I noticed they had uh, Mandarin Horito slush. I think we should give that a try. So to the slush cup right there and we just let the slush flow. There we go. So let's see how Wally's uh, Great American Road Trip stacks up against the competitor. I got a barbecue sliced brisket sandwich. Of course Bucky's has their barbecue which I'm a huge fan of. So we'll see how their gas station barbecue tastes. Take a look at this. This is the sandwich. Let's take a look at the meat there. Under the bun. Got a little extra barbecue sauce here I'm gonna add to this. Give that a little drizzle. And here we go. Hmm. It's okay. It's good for gas station barbecue, but that does not compare to Bucky's. It's not as moist as Bucky's. Not as smoky as Bucky's. So a fair attempt, but it is not uh, does not match up to what Bucky's barbecue is. Of course, not everything needs to be held up against Bucky's. Wally's is its own entity, but we went ahead and got the uh, the sluice, the sluice as well. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I love the Horitos, the Mexican soda. Mm. So that's very delicious and very pleasant. Mm. So definitely get the sluice barbecue. We'll see. We'll see. Not. Maybe I'm stuck on Bucky's because because Bucky's is also gas station barbecue, and this, in my opinion, is not as good as Bucky's. I do want to give a big thank you to everyone. I, I have been looking at the comments uh, periodically, checking the comments, and the response I got for my video yesterday was just overwhelming. And you guys are awesome. You guys are so encouraging and so uh, thoughtful. You know, and I, I, I stepped a little bit out of the normal comfort zone I'm in, talking about personal things in my life, but I'm so happy that you guys were so receptive to that and uh, encouraging. Now, the sun's setting here on Route 66, so I will be getting a hotel room here shortly. Um, but I did want to mention something in the news today. Um, it appears that um, professional wrestler 
um, Scott Hall, also known as Razor Ramon in WWE. He was uh, apparently, he, he had three heart attacks and his family is now gonna take him off of life support, which is obviously heartbreaking for them. Uh, but it just got me thinking, that was, a, that was a huge part of my growing up. Um, when he was Razor Ramon in WWE, WWF, um, I did, his character was inspired by Scarface, but I had no idea what Scarface was because I was a kid, and it was just this crazy uh, character. It was almost like a drug dealer, or a Cuban drug dealer character, but uh, yeah, I had a big impression. It was a big deal back then, and then I remember he had a match with the 123 Kid, who later became X Pac. The 123 Kid had never won a match before, and he beat Razor Ramon, who was much larger, much more experienced, and it actually turned in to a friendship where Razor Ramon stopped being a bad guy and teamed up with the, the one, two, three kid that had earned his respect. And of course, uh, probably one of the biggest moments in wrestling growing up was the uh, formation of the NWO. And Scott Hall was the basically the founder of the NWO. He was the first wrestler to be part of it. He showed up, he showed up on WCW Nitro and everyone thought he was still working for WWF at the time, and it led to the creation of the NWO, which is one of the biggest storylines, most successful storylines in wrestling history. So Scott Hall, Razor Ramon will definitely, absolutely be missed. So thank you guys for joining me here on this first leg of Route 66. We'll be picking this up tomorrow morning, and I'll be attempting to make it to St. Louis before dark. If everything goes well, I may have to get up early to make sure that happens. But uh, yeah, wish me luck in getting to St. Louis before it's dark. Um, thank you so much. As I said, I appreciate all the feedback, all the comments. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, it helps me out and it lets you know when new videos are coming out. Um, right now I'm traveling all over the country. Uh, over the course of this channel, I've been to 48 continental United States, uh, only missing Alaska and Hawaii. Um, and I continue to travel, filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, uh, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. I just mailed out um, the postcards for March this morning. So if you are a Patreon subscriber, those are on their way. And we're also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. There are four currently available. There will be a fifth pin debuting as soon as I get back to North Carolina and check my mail. Um, of course, all that helps keep this car on the mother road, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends, this one's in the bag. Oh, by the way, I cut myself shaving. <laughs>